Better. The one that we all run into, right? Yeah. So, I mean, in my case, I've given them God knows how many different ways to be successful. They've got videos. They've got the textbook. They've got homework. They've got office hours. They've got SI. They right. And yet they choose not to read the textbook, not to go to SI, not to do the homework, not to come to office hours, and then they wonder why they don't do well. Right. So the question becomes, and I had this conversation, Lisa, with Danny Verson this morning while you were at class, what can we do that will um, get them to buy in more? Because at this point, it seems like we've given them all the different ways that we can to be successful, but they choose not to use them. So is the problem more of a mindset issue, Lori? Yes, yeah, sounds is like it, it, right? Right? Uh, is that the problem? And then how do we tackle that instead of, you know, or, or is it still a pedagogical problem? Well, I think the, I think the mindset's important. And I think um, something that I'm excited about with encouraging students you to have groups outside of class this quarter what's cool about it is the question of what do students do when they hit a roadblock right what do they do when they try the textbook problem and they get, and they get it wrong or you know they, they've just hit a wall and they don't know how to move past that you know and so 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 I think that's related to this right because they may have had buy-in but then they hit their first struggle and then they give up right so how do we get them to persist as well when they do have those struggles. And, and I, th I think if that piece is missing, then it just becomes apathy, you know, or just checking out or whatever. Oh, this class is too hard, I can't do it. Right, right. So, um, so in other words, how do you strengthen weak buy-in at the beginning so that they persist? Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'd like to show you uh, the end of my quarter, the great data that I'll have. Yeah. I'd like to see your great data too. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the only data I have right now, well, I'm giving the first midterm. Um, Tomorrow, right? Yep. <laughs> in my uh, elements of organic chemistry. So we'll see, we'll see what the response is. But I, I don't know if I've shared this with you before, but this is, um, I don't know if you could read this. Uh, yeah. Is it backwards? No, no, it's right. it's, okay, it looks backwards to me. So um, this is a clicker question that I do kind of the week before the exam or so, and I kind of ask what their level of preparation is so far. And as oh, you can see, cool. it gets progressively, yeah. you know, I've done less and less. Yep. And so the students do this, and then uh, I usually get kind of a, kind of a bell-shaped distribution, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And then after they do it, I say, well, I hate to say that you just predicted your grade in this course, but you have. But, and then the whole room, like you hear this audible gasp in the lecture room, like, <gasps> because now I was hoping that with, you know, the, the past three weeks and I've done all this mindset, I've done this, you know, we're, we're, you know, neuroplasticity and we had these groups and I redesigned my syllabus and, you know, kumbaya. Mm -hmm. I was expecting to see like this really different distribution than I normally have. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it really wasn't. So like usually what, there was maybe 30, what, about 50 responses and I think it was there was six in the a which is usually about you know and then there was 14 and 15 and then 18 oh. I would so, say Lori I can't see the bottom of the list it's the it bottom of the list is, the like, um, uh, it's, know, it's, is it letter e or letter f yeah, well it's letter e and then I say okay. there is no grade e yeah. you can maybe guess and it's the old I've come to every lecture have no trouble following along but I haven't really done much with the book yet it's like okay and I said, that doesn't mean that that's your trajectory from here forward. But I said, if you have that level of effort. If that's where you stay, then that's where you forward, you cannot pass this class. I and mean, I don't know what else to tell you that, you know, you, you still have a week to prepare for this first midterm. But, you know, that's really not enough to do as well as you want to do. So keep that. So anyway, I didn't see a really big difference in their self-reported level of effort. But again, it's organic chemistry. They usually need that first midterm to have that wake-up call of like no really really you have to work on the no, problem. Really is really we're hard. not going to be able to do it on the midterm are most yeah. of your students majors and this is a required course for them it's all required for all of them yes and this is the elements class so it's non-chemistry majors non typically not science majors there's a few bio majors that need it but it's like kinesiology food science nursing yes uh yeah we don't have nursing but that sort of thing oh. um so anyway, it's it's an interesting. I mean, but any first 
quarter of organic of any level, you always have, ha there, there is only so much coaxing you can do before that first midterm mm -hmm. because they still think they got it all. Like, I got this. Right? It seems easy when you do it. I, I got it. I mean, I've never had a class where I haven't made an A w with just studying the night before. So after this first midterm is maybe when we have that heart to heart. In fact, my, my metacognition um, exercise next week. So, t so tomorrow's the exam Thursday when we meet, I'll give them their graded exams back. I'll do the exam wrapper, which is a great way to kind of <coughs> think about the mistakes you made, what are you going to do differently? And then my intervention is going to be the importance of failure, you know, and how failure is not falling down. It's not getting back up, you know, that whole, right. uh, there's again, some great YouTube videos that shows, you know, Michael Jordan was cut from his team and Oprah got fired from her newscasting job. And, you know, all this great list of these super successful people who just fell flat on their face at some point and picked themselves back up. So that's going to be my big lesson on Thursday saying, okay, if you're where you are, if you're where you don't want to be, that's okay. You know, here's what you could do to move to, to propel yourself forward. So fail, yeah. fail. The acronym stands for first attempt in learning. Oh, wow. nice. Oh, nice. You know what I'm thinking of doing? I, when I ever have my histogram of the scores, I always have, I label the ones at the bottom as the danger zone. Mm -hmm. well, shout out to Archer. Um, but I think I'm going to, I think instead of danger zone, I'm going to, I'm do, I'm going to put um, not there yet, which not is not here yet. thing I heard, about, you know, like instead of an F and I, I think that's kind of a K-12 thing. Instead of an F grade, you say, you know, I think they even said like NY, not yet. And so yep. I'm just gonna put that there. So like, okay, that doesn't mean you're out of the game, but you're not there yet. And so what are you going to do to get to that point? So very mindset esque, Lori. I'm really, I'm so in, I'm so, <laughs> but you're right, Eric, if the students don't, I can't want it for them. Right. Yeah. And so if they're not, well, there's always going to be some number. I've all 101 students. There's going to be some number, hopefully a very small number, which just chooses to never buy in. Yeah. So I can't, I will have no influence on them. I, I have a, um, Okay, anyone can hear me? Yes, yes. hi. Okay, I have a question. Um, just what Rory said earlier, I mean, I heard a lot of students saying, right, well, I've been get, getting A in my bio class or my A in fiber class, but why I cannot get an A in chemistry? I mean, I don't know what to say. <laughs> just, yeah, I just found a lot of students saying that. Say, oh, yeah, no, I didn't study. I said, well, did you do A, B, and C? And then they're like, uh, yeah, I did. But you know, I get an A. If I do this, I'll get an A in my bio course or in my English course or in another class, but chemistry. Yeah, I think that I think the, um, the difference is chemistry is more like uh, learning a musical instrument. You know where it's like you just it's more than just knowing the rules of like this is what how you you know these are where your fingers need to be to make the an a chord you know it's more than just knowing the rules it's applying it and so you might not have that as much in these other courses where you haven't had to practice and practice and practice to reach reach a level of competence and expertise and so pointing out that difference might might show them why that the that what's worked in other classes isn't applicable here because you're having to do a, you're having to do a skill set that um, takes a lot of practice to get there. I wonder if it's uh, part of it is because the expectation, because I mean, if you ask a student say, well, how about your calculus course or your, even your pre-cap and they were like, oh yeah, that's a really difficult class. So they, if you want to get a good grade, you have to put in a lot of effort. But somehow I feel like they don't think that's true in chemistry. Mm. They often compare it with uh, biology course. Mm. And they feel like they have to put a lot more effort in chemistry than biology. And that's not what they feel they, sh they need to. So it's their expectations that they're coming in. I wonder if it's because many of them have had high school chemistry and so I've, I've had that conversation with students saying i don't know why i'm taking this class i've already had chemistry i'm done that's all you need right and i mean i literally had the, it, was, it was my first time teaching freshman chemistry 
we were discussing this in the hall right before the first midterm. <laughs> and he said, I don't know why I'm taking this. I already had high school chemistry. And then he failed the midterm. I literally, you know, because I remember this one student, and as I was handing back his exam, I see his grade. I'm like, you know, can you there be any more of a disconnect yeah. about where you are and where you need to be? And, oh, maybe that's why you have to take this class. Yeah. Don't know. But I, I wonder if maybe that's the expectation is because they, they haven't had calculus before. So they know they have to work hard for it. Where chemistry, it's like, oh, I've already done that. Chemistry, that word's that's, familiar to me. Yeah. yeah. That, Chemistry, that word's familiar to me. Yeah, so I, why would I need to study? But don't, I mean, but don't they come in? I have a lot of students come in that, oh, chemistry in high school, that was hard, or I didn't like it. Like, they come in with this preconceived notion of chemistry, right. not, oh, I've had chemistry. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's a double-edged sword. It's, it's, they are either coming in hating it already <laughs> or thinking it's easy already. Then both of those suck. <laughs> both of us put us in... In a bad position. In a bad position, yeah. Right. None of them like semiconductors, I can tell you that. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure they love it now, though. No, they don't. No, no still. I'm, I'm going to go home and tell my children about <laughs> semiconductors, and they will appreciate it. No, they won't. No, well, that's true. Not yet. Maybe Radley. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting conversation to have. Um, both edges of that sort I've been thinking about for a mm. semesters now, at least. And I started one of my maybe naive ways of trying to deal with it was to start asking students in my polls on the first day of class when I give them <coughs> well not <coughs> surveys student attitudes and perceptions and so forth I ask them things like name the top three or five concepts in genetics you you don't want to learn about what? And they always say things like punish <coughs> things that either they've it's either things they've learned about before and they've had it ad nauseum and they don't want to hear it about it again, or it's things that they bring in those preconceived notions. Either they don't get it, they don't understand it, or they've heard it three times and they don't want it again. And I showed them those results the next day, and we explicitly discuss that this class is a going to go in more depth for those topics they think they've already had before five times and that i'm explicitly working to make those things that are insurmountable more surmountable because nice. i explicitly recognize that a lot of students have troubles with those concepts i have no data whether or not that actually works but i totally agree i think that that buy-in has both of those aspects related have you noticed anecdotally at all a little less hostility to students or a little less eye rolling? You're like, oh God, not the peas, not the wrinkled peas and the exactly. green peas and the. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Slightly less uh, angry about it. It's, yeah, how you present the material to the students. That, yes, you've heard about this before. We're going to talk in more detail about Mendel's peas. Absolutely. That's probably the prime example. Thanks for, you hit that one on the Hey, it stuck with me too, right? <laughs> and uh, square analysis any statistical analysis that we do in genetics yeah math yeah. is scary yeah exactly um angel how have you responded to those students who brought those concerns to you <coughs> i usually tell a student uh <coughs> opportunity say, well because i have majority of my students are from biology and clinical science and so I usually tell them at the beginning, I tell them, say, how much effort they need to put in. And when students complain to me, if they, if they um, compare the, their biology course with chemistry course and say, saying that they don't need to put as much effort in, but they can get the result they want in biology. And I will tell them the difference between the biology and chemistry. And chemistry doesn't require a lot more because uh, one is because they need um, better mathematical skill which they probably don't need in some of the biology course, especially the general biology course. So they cannot just rely on memorizing the, you know, the material and they have to apply. And this basically is a problem solving skill. That's what they don't have. And so I kind of let them know, you know, the different in the subject and also what skill <coughs> Quiet. And I, I did tell them, I say, you know, it, it might take a semester of training for them to get a good critical reasoning and problem solving skill, but um, 
is a different, they say it's a different type of thinking. Uh, so students, I don't know, some of them, they, they kind of say, well, yeah, they understand that. But, you know, after the first midterm, um, they probably will come back and say, well, you know, I did study, but I did still didn't get what I did. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I, I planned on doing for the course redesign, but I haven't implemented yet, <clears throat> and I still think I need to do it, is writing out explicit instructions. Because like I always say, the, the three most important things you could do to prepare for the exam are textbook problems and textbook problems and textbook problems, right? Like the, that's my little motto, and they all get it, and they have, you know. <laughs> I, but I literally had someone at week 10, last week of classes, and she was in there last quarter and she was asking about something or other and i said you know what have you prepared and this and that and i said well you know textbook problems textbook problems and then she's like yeah um when you say what do you mean by textbook problems when you say that i'm like oh my god week 10 week 10 you're asking for clarification on the most important mantra that i've repeated a thousand times so it's like and again you have to like step back from the emotion where I did not throttle her. I did not throw anything at her. I, you know, but what, what's my response got to be? It's, it's gotta I, I be. don't think my filter would have been strong enough to say <laughs> something that you can laugh about now, but I was like terrorized. I was just terrified. So, but, but again, explicitly saying, so what do I mean when I mean textbook problems? Why not explicitly say that? And, you know, and I've gotten more and more to kind of talking that out in office hours, but I've never put it into, put it into words and put it into writing where you could say like, okay, so what I mean is after you, after we do my lecture on residence, right, then what should you do? You should go to that section in the textbook on residence and read that section, right? Like it never occurs to them to do that. Read that section. And then there's going to be in chapter problems related to that, you know, them. work on those problems, you know, um, take the examples we did in class, copy them down, redo those, right? I mean, that, that has to be, if you can't redo the problem we did in class, you know, then you're not ready for the one in, the new ones in, in the textbook. And then you're certainly not ready to do the ones that I assigned for homework, you know, cause that's for, for then I have like a homework sheet and that's the first residence problems they've ever done are the ones they're turning in for homework. Well, I mean like, well, that's dumb cause you've never gotten any feedback on any problems that you have answers to. Right. So, I mean, you should, you should be getting some experience before you do the ones that you're turning in to be, you know, evaluated on. So, but anyway, it's like, why am I keeping all this information up here and assuming like, well, duh, they should know that rather than explicitly writing it out. So I think that might be another thing that I put together for Thursday with my, okay, you know, you didn't do as well as you wanted to do. Here's what, if you haven't been doing this, 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 and this yet. That's why. Let's do that the next seven weeks. Yeah. And, and, we, and, we can, and we can turn things around dramatically. So still on my to-do list there's so much on my to-do list but you know what you know what Lori? i've, I've done that before you have okay verbally with students yes uh students that come in office hours they say well i'm not getting what i want and i say well have you done these things and they say no i say okay so i walk them through and those that then do those things their exam scores go up by 20 points instantly exactly it's and then i tell them to go tell their friends mm -hmm. and what do their friends do not the nothing thing. Yeah. yeah absolutely nothing some of them just don't want to listen right so but again so the, there will be people who choose not to act right but again thinking about those who really do want to do well and they do have time like i had a student in my office she's like i have the time i can do it not doing and i'm like you're clearly not using your time wisely and it turned out she was every time she got stuck so back to the persistence thing every time she got stuck she would go to youtube and, you know, try and find an answer. And I'm like, oh my God, that is such not a good use of your time, right? Or she would rewatch my lectures on educator. I'm like, none of that is helping you learn the material, you know? So it's like, at least if I have it out there explicitly and in writing rather than just verbally, which all makes sense, great. But then you're hitting just one or two students and then they forget it, the yeah. minute they leave your office. So putting in writing, putting it out there, having a record of it, those who want to, you know, act on it now i'm giving them the tools to really do it i'm glad that you mentioned persistence we want the growth mindset not the fixed mindset and yeah right about giving feedback when students hit that roadblock what's everybody's perspective on how 
immediately a student, the, the average student, the generic student. Yeah. How immediately does the generic student need help or feedback when they hit that obstacle before you lose them to the uh, mindset? Hmm. I mean, obviously it differs from student to student, but I'm a little bit of background for me. I'm teaching genetics. I don't use a textbook anymore. I use free open stacks textbooks. I've flipped the classroom. I've got a few problem sets that I've created, but nowhere near as extensive and exhaustive as a textbook. Yet. <coughs> Nor do I have as exhaustive the answer keys. So I can ask students to work on these small problem sets that I've created and they've helped me create, but they don't get that immediacy of I can go to the back of the book and look up the answer. And I've been wondering if I'm doing them a disservice by having them work on things between classes and not getting an answer or help until the next time we meet as a class or the next time they could come to office hours. Yeah, I think, I think feedback is the most important thing and immediate, which is the one advantage to online yeah. homework compared to the textbook where they click on it and they click submit and they say it's wrong right. and they immediately know that. And maybe it gives a hint, you know, maybe it gives some customized feedback, but even if it doesn't just the immediate, I don't have to now look it up in the answer solutions manual and find it and compare the two. And is it right? Is it wrong? I mean, maybe sometimes they got it wrong and they don't even realize they have it wrong right? because it, Oh, it looks close enough. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, I think instantaneous and abundant mm -hmm. is the most important thing is the feedback because it's all about formative assessment. If they're not, yeah. if they're not getting that feedback, which is why, so I wrote the, I, I wrote a book on, um, synth organic synthesis and I, I wrote it to the undergraduate level because nothing existed that way. Yep. And it's filled with tons of problems and every single solution is in the book. Yep. Because that was always the big problem. It's like, well, where do I get practice problems? How do I know if I'm getting things right? How, you know, without that, you can't, you can't ever grow as a, as a learner. So, um, yeah, I think that's huge. And so, and, but I, but I appreciate that once you have the answers, then you don't have like, oh, well, this is something we're going to work on together, or this is something we're going to turn in for homework. So I think having both of those right. yeah. <laughs> is critical. Here's the ones for you to practice on your own again and again and again and get that instantaneous feedback. And then here are some others that you can work on and we'll have that delayed feedback because we're going to turn it in or work on it as a group or, you know, do it when we flip or whatever. Yeah. I, I agree with Rory because if I did it, this, um, <laughs> I have the online homework. Um, student can get an instant feedback and my classes are free. So the student actually work in the team and then they, they work on worksheet in class. Um, they might not finish the whole worksheet. So what it is they might finish it, they say 10 questions. And then I, I will tell them, well, they need to finish the rest at home. And then on the second meeting time, I'll go over, uh, well, the team will go over the question first. And then at the end, I will go over the question with, with them. Um, I did see one, um, the attendance actually increased quite a lot. Um, so that's a good sign because usually, you know, by after the, what, I think after the four week, the attendance starts to drop. Yeah. So one thing is the attendance, um, it's a lot better. And I think the number of students who do, who actually do the homework is actually <laughs> Uh, internal grade, I did see increase in grade. So at least I, I feel like I push the student who kind of on the borderline up were passing. Um, well, you're still going to have some students, they will not do any work. So I don't know what to do with those students. Yeah. Hmm. <coughs> yeah. The students that just don't engage from the beginning are the ones that frustrate me the most no end yeah I'm still trying to figure that out I just wasn't my mindset when I went to school so well that's our that's the challenge is none of us were typical students right so I, I mean none of us can get how you cannot read the book like what why would you spend all this money on the book and not read it you know but but um, yeah I mean but there's there's 
our perception and then there's the reality. So you just got to say, okay, this is what it is. There are going to be some students who don't even buy the book. You know, okay. So that's the choice they made. But yeah, ultimately, I, I, I try not to lose sleep over it because, yeah. you know, it's nothing, it's out of our control. Yeah. <laughs> what was your, uh, what was your tech failure this morning, Joe? Oh, it was a usual one. The uh, wireless presentation wasn't connecting to my tablet, mm. which is fine. That's why I carry an HDMI cord. Uh. <laughs> I plug in and everything's fine. Okay. But, right. Yeah, it's it's minor. It's it was spring break, like I said, so maybe something updated and didn't reboot or. Back. Thanks. I'm gonna write myself a note to contact our classroom tech services people and make them fix it. Did you? Well, have a, a, oh, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I had a tech um, tech su success story. Ooh, even better. I just went last week. Um, our e-learning offered a Zoom session on a video creator slash editor called Spark. Has anyone used that or heard of it? I haven't heard of it. Oh my God, it's so cool. So it's spark.adobe.com. Uh, oh, it's Adobe, huh? Spark.adobe.com. It's a it's free you know, website enabled. And you go there <clears throat> and you can create a presentation and you just uh you know you for each slide you just create a, each slide so it's almost like you create a little powerpoint each slide you could pick an image and you can write a few words and you can pick from you could either choose an image that you have on file and you could upload it or you could search and there they have like a really nice library of um uh, uh, icon type art you know like What's what I'm looking for, like just stock art. Yeah. And so you could pick the image, you could write a few words, you make all your slides, and then you go to each slide, and then it has a record button. You just click and hold the record button, and you speak. And that's how you do the narration for each slide. And then it just it just has it all, and you could download it, you could upload it to YouTube, you can do whatever you want with it, and it even has like different themes you can pick. It it has background music that it can add. You know, so it has like this, I and mean, it comes to this really kind of slick looking presentation when it's all said and done. Um, and so I just learned about this Thursday and immediately it's great applications because I have a student who's working on her for a senior project. She's doing uh, tutorials on how to do um, uh, flash column chromatography. Yeah. You know, how to pack a column around a column and this and that, the theory of it. Well, we were normally get, regularly going to use explain everything for that, but this was so much easier and you just do it like one slide at a time so you record it and if you don't like the recording you just re-record it for the one of the images you can insert instead of an image you can insert a video so if you made a video demonstration you can include that as part of your presentation anyway it was just so simple and cool and interesting and then immediately over my last week was my kid's spring break and he had a huge project that he had to like you know months ago that was due today um and it was effect of religion on society or something like that was his topic that's a pretty so he finally topic. he had finally written his huge paper but part of it he had to do a video presentation and we he didn't you know we were, i didn't know what we were going to do for that just iMovie or something and all of a sudden i was like oh my god let's do spark and in just two hours not even an hour he created this amazing presentation he had like this creepy horror music in the background and he videotaped a little part, like a news newscast, and then we we embedded that. I mean, it was just it looks like he looks like he spent weeks on it, and he did it in less than an hour. It was so cool. Hmm. So Spark, I think Spark.adobe.com. <clears throat> Very nice way to put together a little lesson, so it could be a little instruction if you want to like, shoot something out to your class, yep. uh, you know, or or, or I don't, you know, so it doesn't. The only difference is it's uh, compared to a screencast, you know, it's not recording your pen strokes. But if you wanted to show a series of pictures or images and have some instructions or, or something <coughs> where it's static, um, it's super, super quick and easy way so to put could, it together. Yeah, I suppose you could, record, <laughs> you could record a tablet writing and explain everything, export that as a movie and then put that in. Exactly. You can. You're right. You could take that and embed it as a as a bigger, bigger lesson. Any Apple people out there? Have you used Clips yet? 
What is that? Clips came out last week also. Uh. And it's, um, you use any Apple device, tablet, phone, laptop, well, tablet or phone, I think it's an iOS, I, internet, mobile yeah. operating system. Um, but it sounds very similar, actually. You, you can record things, you can insert effects. The reason that a lot of educators took note about this, though, is that you use it for making presentations. So you record yourself, you record somebody else, but it does on-the-fly captioning. Oh, my gosh. So wow. there were people that had posted, I'm talking right now, so I could be recording this. If I was recording this on clips, you would actually be seeing my captioning in real time at the bottom of your screen. Wow. And they just use the Siri voice recognition engine to do that. Because obviously they were already they already have the technology to understand what you're saying. So now they just put it at the bottom of the screen in text. Awesome. So huge for accessibility for any sort of student or faculty presentations if you don't want to do captioning yourself or right. pay for it. Have you tried it or have you seen a demo or you just heard about it? I've seen demos. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll- I haven't had time to try it yet. I haven't made I'll time. send it over to my e-learning folks and they can maybe yeah. set up another Zoom. They can teach yeah. me about it. Clips. <laughs> yeah, cool. And just normal CLIPS? Yes. Not like with a K and a ZZ at the end? Yeah, and there's no I in it either. Well, there's an I in clips. No, I, it's not I clips. No. Right. I gotcha. Just clips. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So that's my failure is failure having not tried that yet. So many, so many hours in the day. Yeah. And since it was spring break, I was doing other things. I've got family in town. And yeah. It's been fun. So yeah. I've got taxes due tomorrow. And, well, we all have taxes due tomorrow, but... <laughs> We're still working on our taxes. Not quite then. We used to have an accountant and we didn't, we don't anymore just because it's costing too much. And yeah. so my husband has his own business and I have a business with all royalties and stuff. And so yeah. we have yeah, like problems. 8 billion forms to fill yeah. out. So it's going to be a long night for us. Well, we're That's glad you're here spending time with us. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm at school. Yeah, I have advising, a couple hours of advising today. So, uh, but yeah, I think between before, between now and that, I'm going to try and log into Fidelity and see if I can download our statement. <laughs> so I do have a little bit of work, but mostly I did all the background, got all the numbers together, and now it's my husband's job to crank it into tax cut and make it work. So send a little prayer our way. Sounds like a good division of labor. Yeah, it is. It is. We're a good team. And this was, I have to show, this is a super fun thing we did on Easter. That is what that was. That is Stan Lee's autograph. Oh. So we met him yesterday and uh, got his autograph on a whole bunch of things. It's kind of cute. I don't know. See if you can see your own screen very much, but the little <laughs> Iron Man is like perfectly placed in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah oh, I did. On purpose. Yeah. Okay. okay. Product placement. So yeah, he's going to be part of our thing. And I also got a, I, I taped him to my wall. I got a big um, Deadpool. Uh, icon and he signed the bottom of that too and he we have Pez dispensers he signed we got five different things signed wow. he was, cool. there was a um, a new collectible store opening in Brea which is where I live and so he was there doing oh. signatures it was amazing wow. it lucked out we really lucked out in getting it all it all came together How so fun. great to meet him and and have some memorabilia signed cool yeah so we scoured the mall I, I don't normally own this but uh, we bought this at the mall, this and a Spider-Man one Saturday night. We were trying to find like, what can he sign? We oh my gosh, we need something. something. So I got a little cutout, which I totally love. Ah. So it's fun to have stuff like that in my office because it's great conversation starters with the students. I have yeah. anime stuff all over and, you know, it kind of puts them at ease. Hmm. <laughs> Makes it seem a little less scary. Because you're so, you're so angst-inducing. Well, you think doing? that, but I swear. So I had a student, again, just all these things come up. I had a student come in last quarter, and she came in, and she's looking around. She's looking at the anime. She's like, oh, my God, this is so cool. She's like, I was so nervous to come in here. I, so, again, these are the things they're usually thinking, but they, you know, in 20 years, they haven't necessarily expressed it. She's like, I was so nervous to come in here. But, I, you know, I'm so glad I did and everything, you know, it seems so cool. And I'm just like, can I be any more friendly and yeah. accessible no. in class? But there's still that separation of yep. you're the professor, 
you're scary. You're automatically scary. I'm sorry. Yep. And coming to your office, just automatically intimidating. I could give out lollipops and it would still, you know, just be a huge barrier. So I've been told I'm a big, scary bear. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to put, I want to put over the top of my door, den of the big, scary bear. <laughs> so Lisa, now you know what to get me for my birthday. Got it. Check. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> How about I don't bite? You know, maybe that's a good. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, I heard this same story before a couple of years ago. <coughs> faculty professional development workshop I went to on tech and teaching. And yeah, somebody, the speaker relating um, the seventh circle of hell being equivalent to the faculty members. Oh office. my gosh. Students would, you know, um, so this semester I actually made it part of my grading scheme that I, I explicitly have points that students earn if they come to my office and ask me a question that's relevant to class. Nice. Very few of them, a fraction of them have. Right. And even with points. Yeah, not worth the points. Done. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Still You're too, too scary. scary. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Well, it, it, I mean, it is, Maybe you are very vulnerable as a student yep. when you're going in there because it's, it's very scary to ask questions and it's, yeah. There's no hiding behind anyone if it's just the two of you in the office right. or in a classroom. You can kind of just anonymously click or something. So it is very, very scary. I get that. Yeah. Yep. Well, kudos to you for offering the points and offering the incentive. Right. Yeah. I was got afraid. a few people to come who normally wouldn't have, right? It, it's true. I realize that it's helpful. It did. I have had much better attendance at office hours there this you go. semester than ever. Right. So it was good. I advertise it as free tutoring, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, that's what I it tell is. Them, I'm the one who knows all the answers to the test. Yeah, you can come ask me anything. I, how, can you, how can you pass that up? But, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, used, I used to have really awesome office hours attendance, and then I switched to online homework. And now I, I get I have hardly anybody comes. Right, because they're getting that feedback instantly. I know, I know. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah, especially this semester, I'm using Alex, and I've had, like, three homework questions that's week 12 for us right and most of them are like oh yeah when you squared that thing in parentheses you forgot to square the number too okay moving on like, awesome. <laughs> yeah. thank you for coming yeah come back soon yeah yeah it's amazing how much well maybe not amazing how much wording matters as we were discussing earlier um, you know whether or not you call it f's and d's or not yet I know a lot of campuses have been having the conversation about whether or not to call classes remedial. Oh, yeah. That mindset that of a remedial class, <clears throat> there must be something wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they even, there's studies showing that uh, grading using purple ink instead of red ink mm. has, has a much better uh, impact. Hmm. You know? and, and so again, I, I, no, I haven't, I haven't done that. Mostly, I'll put that in my budget maybe for my next C, uh, CRT. Uh, Multicolor pen. I, it's just a, yeah, it's just a logistics thing for me. I've got a I've got a thousand red pens and no purple ones. But um, right. yeah. Hmm. So what other things can we rename that would help? So office hours, <laughs> free tutoring, right? Free tutoring session with cookies. I haven't resorted to that either. Yeah. But. I'm loath to do that. Although occasionally, since my daughter is in Girl Scouts, any unsold uh, boxes I buy. So right, stash. So it just so happens there are cookies here, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that if I bake something, they would not come back. I brought pretty roses. Oh, Ooh. that's awesome! How beautiful! Look at those colors. I know. Those are from home. Yep. Wow. My goodness. I see the egg cartons too. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we no, have chickens and roses, pretty much. <laughs> Did you color your own eggs this year? Yeah, um, a little bit. It's kind of a little bit of a bummer because we have mostly brown and green laying chickens. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I picked out. We have one chicken who lays white eggs. So I like saved hers for a couple days and then got the lightest ones that we could. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, like, we I'm not buying eggs. I'm not buying eggs because the chickens are laying so many. We're getting like 10 or 12 eggs a day. I'm no. not buying eggs. <laughs> so, and my kids are getting very, very, mom, what's for breakfast? Eggs. Oh, right. <laughs> this is what we have. 
good breakfast. Like how many lemon meringue pies can you make? Yeah, well, <laughs> but it was uh, that was better when our lemon before the lemon tree died. Uh, oh, but, I was going to say uh, lemon curd, but yeah, lemon meringue pies. Lemon meringue pies. Yeah, meringue, meringue, that's meringue. a big egg user. Right. Yes. Um, I make a peppermint meringue cookies. I can do that. Mm. Maybe you can start selling the eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, w occasionally we do. Yeah. But I feel like they're there. We're there. We should. You know. Uh, eggs. You're gonna like it. Yes. Well, I had my obligatory egg salad, salad sandwich today for the uh, National Egg Salad Day. Oh, was it National Egg Salad Day? Well, the day after Easter, you've got all these hard boiled uh, eggs. Yeah, I had hard boiled eggs for breakfast. If that exactly. makes sense. <laughs> oh, I forgot to bring my hard boiled egg. Ah, well. Uh, well, there's always tomorrow, Joe. Yep. And the next day. And the next day. Yes. And the next day. I think we still have 21 hard boiled eggs in the fridge. Oh yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, no. No. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, you go to your taxes, Lori. Yep. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Hours. If we have, any of us have any sort of conclusion on how to improve people who don't understand that chemistry is hard. Uh, well, when we saw so whoever solves that problem, immediately text everyone else. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll send it out to the team. <laughs> that weekend, like, check that off. Yeah. <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> no problem. Well, one is oh, that's awesome. It's all about how it's named and that there's immediate feedback. That's my summary. Right. Yeah. I think those are both good points. So should we call it chemistry, not not the class you had in high school? Yes, <laughs> see that too. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be on every syllabus from now on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I teach organic chemistry, so I don't have that problem. Right. It's, right. it's uh -huh. automatically by default not the chemistry they've seen before. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that problem. That misconception is never coming so in. Maybe we can organic. channel that that Star Wars <laughs> scene where Obi Wan Kenobi is fooling people and goes, "Oh, these are not the droids you're not looking for." Yes, this is not <laughs> the chemistry. <laughs> this is not the chemistry for. you have seen before, and then they'll be ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Uh, well, good luck, everyone. Yay! Bye, everyone. Thanks for chatting. Have Thanks for the invitation, Joe. Yeah. Absolutely. Have a good week. Bye, guys. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. Bye.